I would like to welcome all the participants, and this includes me and Abdurrahman only. So, uh, welcome to a new session to the yeah to the book club on methods on network analysis. So today we'll be discussing chapter seven about network visualization and aesthetics. Uh, and for this chapter, I have taken the the content from the original chapter, which used iGraph for visualization of networks. And I have I tried to summarize and also provide uh, the code in ggGraph as well as iGraph because uh, iGraph maybe at the time that the book was written, it was the, the only way, uh, method available for network um, visualization. But now ggGraph I think is a, is is more is more powerful and uh, you have more control on the visualization. So will be for each plot, I'll be showing the iGraph version and then the ggGraph version for the same plot. Okay. So the overall objective of this chapter is to have uh, an idea and have some uh, understanding of on how to change the to visualize the network and how to change the aesthetics. Uh, of your network. And the main goal is to, at the end, being able to uh, maximize and ma making it easier to convey a certain message or a certain story by your network. Okay, so it's not only aesthetics, but it's actually, uh, it contributes to the overall understanding uh, of your analysis and your work. Okay, so let's go. Uh, so to start with, uh, I first loaded the, the data. So the data that we'll be looking at uh, today is a very, very small uh, network of, uh, I think it's a, like a family. So we have uh, five uh, people and then we'll be looking at the connection between those. So here I start by loading the data. Uh, the data, I don't have the data locally, but I load it from the GitHub repository. So this is something that you can do. You don't have to have the data. Uh, locally in order to load it, but you can provide the, the link to this data. And then, so this is the table, money, edge list, CSV. And then I use read CSV to read it. And uh, we'll have a look at how this data looks like, but first, uh, because this data, it's just like, uh, this is how it looks like. It's an edge list. An edge list is like two columns that connect one, uh, one agent or one entity or one node to another node. So this would mean that, uh, in this network, we have Greg connected to Maria and Greg connected to Mark and Greg connected to Lex and so on. Yeah. And this network is directed. So the first, uh, it's a directed network. So the first column is the source and the second column is the receiver. So when you are uh, visualizing your network, you will have an edge. This edge will be an arrow uh, connecting, uh, in this case, Greg, which is the source to the receiver, which is Maria. Okay. And uh, so an edge list, uh, now we have an edge list, but an edge list is not um, an object to an, a network object. So we need to convert it to a network object so that it would be easier to visualize. And uh, today we'll be using two libraries for analysis for the visualization. The first is iGraph, which is more than a uh, visualization library. It's an, a general, uh, library for network analysis and part of it is for visualization. Uh, so we will take the edge list, which we have already loaded here, and then we will convert it to a matrix and then we will uh, make a graph from this edge list. So this is a function from iGraph and we will set directed to true because this is a directed network. Uh, so, and I, I will call this money network uh, IG, which is iGraph. Uh, we will also make an, uh, a similar object. It's the same data, but we'll make it in tidy graph. So we'll make a as table graph. Uh, so a table is like, like a table. So we'll take the, the money network I graph, and then we will convert it from an I graph object to a tidy graph object. So we, you don't have to care a lot about the difference between these two objects, like the structure of these two objects, but you have just to know is they are representing the same, all you need to know is that they are representing the same network, they contain the same data. It just like the first is a structure that belongs to the iGraph uh, library and the other is connected to the tidygraph library. And the reason I've uh, added the tidygraph 
version of all the plots is that I would like to show for which context one of them might be better to use. Yeah. Uh, so now we have the two objects to the two network. We can uh, have a look on what is inside the edge list. So this is the, the raw data. And then we took the data and we made the iGraph object. So this is what is inside the iGraph object. It simply tells you that it's a directed uh, network, DN. It consists of <coughs> six nodes and it has 11 edges. So 11 connections between these uh, six people, yeah? And we have the attributes. We have the, uh, the attributes here. It, there is nothing in there yet, but uh, we have the edges. So because there is, we didn't add any attributes to, to the to the nodes. So we only the only thing we have about the nodes now uh, is there uh, is, are their names, yeah. But we don't know. We have don't have any other attributes or metadata. But we have the edges, and for the edges, we have here are represented the edges between all the nodes: the Greg to Maria, Greg to Mark, and so on. Yeah. Uh, this is how the the tidy graph object of the same network looks like. So it's more tidy and. Uh, so you have, it's basically two tables. You have one table that has the nodes. So here the nodes are the, the people. And then you have the edges. And the edges are the connections between these people. And tidygraph, it's, it's, it's tidy. And if you are used to using tidy, the, tidy, the packages from tidyverse and the tidy approach for analysis, you'll find this uh, more easier to, to understand and more easy to follow. So let's jump into the, our first plot of today. So the first plot is uh, this one. So you take to plot the network in the, using iGraph. You just have to provide the, the network object, the iGraph object, and then use plot, yeah? And here uh, you can see the, the network. So you have the one, two, three, four, five, six, six people, and then they are connected among each other by these edges. And because it's directed, you have the, these edges are represented as errors, yeah? And here you can see that I've, I use this uh, function set seed because uh, if you don't, so set seed, what it does is that uh, if you have a random process underlying your code, uh, this would make sure that each time you run the code, you get the same output. So for example, if you use a plot, if you run this code in your uh, R console, you will find that each time you run it, you will get a different layout. So a different arrangement of the, of the, of the nodes. So it's the same network, but they are, uh, you have different arrangements. And this might not be the best for reproducibility. So uh, it's, it's a good practice to add uh, a seat. So this seat can be any number, but because you're using the same number, each time you run the code, you will always end up with the same arrangement of nodes. Uh, this is the same code represented here. And next, what's, uh, because I will be moving from an iGraph representation of the network and then go to uh, have a look on the tidy graph. And I would like to make this comparison uh, like very uh, like as clear as I can. What I did here is that I used this uh, layout nicely so that I would um, make a layout from this network and save this layout so that each time I try to plot this network, I will have the same layout, whether I'm using iGraph or using tidygraph. So for example, here I've uh, used uh, a layout, which so the layout is, it's an algorithm that tries to put the nodes in a certain arrangement so that you don't have all the edges overlapping each other and it's not clear to see the relationship underlying your network. And uh, here, I, this function is part of uh, iGraph. So I set uh, a, a layout, and this layout will be the one that I'll be using uh, from now on. So here, it's the same network, but I used uh, the layout that we have set here. And you can see that's slightly different from this one. But uh, this is the basic uh, plot from iGraph. You have the, uh, the edges in the gray color. You have the nodes in this. Uh, dark orange color and the text in blue. Yeah, th this is not the, the best or the most aesthetic or the most visually pleasing network, but it's, it's a basic one. And this is a good start uh, to go from, to take it from here and then apply all the modifications you need. Uh, 
Uh, on the other hand, if you try to visualize the same network in tidy graph, to do this, you will have you will be using uh, the the code is very similar to it looks very similar to ggplot. Yeah, so you will call ggGraph, You provide the tidy graph object, and then here I maintain the same layout as we have or have used here, and I call geom edge link and geom node point, and this is how it looks like. So. Compared to this, the layout is the same, but uh, the basic or the, the vanilla version of GigaGraph of this network, uh, you can see that uh, the text is not there. So the labels of each node and also the, the size of the nodes are very small. Uh, so there, there is a lot of work that can, needs to be applied here before this network is ready to communicate. Okay. Uh, so now we have two networks. So these are the basic networks. And in the following uh, code and the, the following uh, text, we'll see how we can improve upon this. Yeah. So the first thing that we can modify in a network is that we'll be discussing is a node. So we can take the node and then we can control the size of the node by in iGraph, we can set the vertex size. So here I have over uh, I increased the, the the size of the node using vertex size, and I set it to 50. And you can see that now it's very big or might be might be just fine, depends on your taste. But you can also mix it, make it more smaller that it can fit your, uh, your text, for example, if you want to add it to a publication or something. Uh, so here, using vertex size, you can control the size of the node. Uh, similarly, you're, if you're trying to approach uh, to achieve the same thing in ggGraph, you can use size in the GM node. And here, for example, I set the size to five. You can see that compared to this plot, now the nodes are bigger and you can make them even bigger by controlling the size. Uh, we can also control the color and the frame, the, the outline of the nodes. So for example, here I've changed the color from orange in the eye graph plot, I change the color from orange to, to this pink, or for me, it's a dark watermelon red. Yeah, so it's called tomato. And I have removed the, the outline, the black outline. And this is how it looks right now. Uh, the similarly, you can do the same thing in the ggGraph by changing the color, which is this argument is available in the geom node point. So as you can see that in in iGraph, you have only one uh, one uh, function with a lot of arguments. Yeah, uh, in ggGraph, you have one function that calls the network. So this function, it's just uh, it has the network data, and then you can start to build it layer by layer in the grammar of uh, in a gg in a gg uh, ggplot manner. So you add the link layer, and then you add the node point layer. So for, if you remove this part, you will have a network with only edges, with uh, edges only. If you remove the edges and you have the nodes, you will have uh, a network with no edges and the nodes. Uh, so it's it's a very modular, and this is what I, I what, this is why I like to I prefer to use ggGraph over iGraph. Uh, furthermore, after changing the the color and the size of the node, you can also uh, add and modify the labels and the text over the nodes. So to do this in iGraph, you can use uh, the vertex label CX, and this would control the size. And also you can control the color. So previously it was blue. Now you can set it to black. And this is how it looks like now. And in a ggGraph, what we need to do is to add yet another layer that holds that has the text. So previously we had links and points only, but now we added a new layer with the text. And in this layer, we refer to name, which is a column in our data that uh, ca that carries the name, the the names of each of these nodes. So this is the iGraph, and this is the ggGraph version of it. Uh, at the same time, you can if you have your iGraph network and you just like to represent the network without any text or any labels on the nodes, you can 
go back to the, the your code and then set the vertex label to NA. And this would just remove the any labeling of the of the nodes in the iGraph network. Uh, so so far we only looked at how to modify the nodes. Uh, Abdurrahman, do you have any questions for this part? Yeah, just a little question using the tidygraph library. I see that the edges are not directed. So how can we make the arrows appear? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So uh, as, you, as you can see in, uh, in iGraph, it can, because you're using only one function, just passing the object to plot, it, uh, it immediately knows that this graph is directed and it uh, add the represent the edges as arrows, yeah. And if you supply, for example, the same network but it's not directed, or you supplied an undirected network to plot, it wouldn't add arrows. It would only be only be like uh, line segments or edges that are not directed. Uh, and for this part, uh, because we were only looking at the nodes, I focused only on how to modify the nodes. But in the following part, we'll be focusing on the edges and how to modify them by uh, making them directed and adding the arrows and controlling the the features of the arrows. So, in a second, the short answer. Yeah. Okay, I'll be waiting. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, after talking about the the nodes, we will now have a look on how to uh, modify the the edges of our network. So in in iGraph, you can control many things about the, your edge. So, for example, you can control the size and the curvature of the edge. So uh, here we try to make the edges more uh, wiggly and uh, curvy by controlling by using the argument edge curved, and then we will provide a value. And this value can go from zero to I think infinity because I tried to go for a very high number, which is not recommended actually. So zero. If you have the value here, if you said the value is zero, th then this would be the straight line. So there will be no, no curvature. And the more you increase this value of edge curve, uh, the more you will get curves in the edges. Uh, at the same time, you can control both the, the width of the edge and also the, the size of the arrowhead. So here, uh, so you have, you don't, uh, you have two arguments to control the, the, the edge, which is you can control either the width of, it, of the edge or the edge you had, uh, and using these two arguments. In, uh, in ggGraph, uh, so here, yeah, so in ggGraph, uh, what I wanted to show is that uh, it's uh, in order to have an edge that is curved, uh, instead of using geom edge length, you will use a geom edge arc, and then it, you can provide strength. So here, the edges will be, will be curved based on how, uh, on the magnitude of the curvature will depend on the value that you provide to strength. Yeah, but you will need to replace the geom edge length function with the geom edge arc function. But this is not the only function that gives can give you a, a curved edge. You can use a geom edge bend, which tries to apply a different curving or a different bending of the of the edges. Also, this is another version which is called geom edge diagonal. So there are many variations in the ggGraph uh, library that tries to uh, achieve this curvature or apply some uh, bending to the edges. Uh, and so despite the fact that they are all different, but they all have this uh, strength argument that controls the magnitude of curving. Uh, but now that we have can control all of uh, all these attributes about the edge in ggGraph, can, how can we add the, the, the arrows? So to do this, here I, I went back to resume edge length and I added this uh, argument. So this argument, it says like arrow, you can just say arrow and then the, give it uh, the argument and then you can only supply arrow as a function with no arguments. But here I wanted to modify and improve the, the look of the edges further. So I can set the angle of the head. So the angle means that for the head, you have this triangle and then the, you can control the angle so that you can have a more flat 
or you can have more sharp head to the edge. So you can control this by the angle. You can also control the length, which is the, the length of the head. And then we have uh, two other uh, arguments. Uh, ends first, I don't remember this one, uh, but for type closed, you can choose between an arrow where the, the head is closed like this one, or the one which you can have uh, like an open arrow. I, like you have uh, the line and then you have the two lines attached to the head of the arrow. So it's not closed. Uh, another thing here that uh, is really nice is that you can add some space around the node so that you don't have over plotting of the heads of the edges to the node. So if you have, if we looked here, you can see that uh, here things are uh, linked to the edges of the node, but in ggGraph, uh, usually you will have things uh, hidden be below the, the nodes. The, the, the edge heads are hidden or overlapping, partially hidden by the nodes. To avoid this, uh, you can add this uh, space around the nodes by using a uh, start cap and end cap. And you can provide uh, yeah, this part. So the node name, node one name and node two name. So it's, uh, I only came to know this when I was preparing for today's session and I don't know uh, how it works underlying uh, beyond this code. So for now, if you would like to have this effect, I would just refer to, uh, you can just use this code. Uh, again, uh, I think one interesting uh, way of representing the edges in ggGraph is that you can forget about the representing the edges as arrows and just represent the edge as line segment. But uh, you can apply this effect where you can go from uh, faint color to dark color that represents the directionality of this edge. So here, for example, uh, the edge is uh, going from Nick to Mark and from Nick to Lexi. And here it's the same thing, but instead of using an arrow, we are using a line segment and the directionality is represented by the, the, the color here. So yeah, it's a, it's a different way of representing the edges. It can, it can be helpful if you have a lot of uh, edges and yeah, you can experiment with both. So it's, a, it's up to you. And actually I have added this notebook because it had uh, a lot of uh, different ways of different approaches for plotting networks. And I think this is where I got this part of the code from. Uh, yeah. So this is, this is it for the edges. And before moving to the next section, so Abdurrahman, any questions? Um, yeah, I think I'm all good. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. The explanation is great. So yeah, uh, thank you for that. Cool. So, so far we have been looking on each part separately. We looked on the nodes separately and then we looked at the edges separately and we tried to optimize the, the appearance of each of these two entities uh, based on the message that we're trying to communicate. But another part is how they are related to each other, how the edges and, uh, and nodes are ordered in the network and this is what is uh, meant by a layout so the layout is the ordering or the arrangement of the nodes of your network in the plot so here i'm showing uh, this gif from uh, from this blog and it shows different layouts of the same network so i think one of the for me i i I should have started with this actually. I, I wanted to say that uh, I have a love-hate relationship with networks because when before starting my, my PhD, uh, for me, a network was something that uh, only represented com complexity. And I used to see this uh, hairballs as something of beauty. And just like, I, I think that it, networks in general as, 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 as a graph or as a plot, it, it's very aesthetic and it's very pleasing, but the, the more I, I, I tried to understand, like the more I uh, was going through my PhD and you try to develop an understanding on the underlying data, it's difficult to understand 
or to get the idea behind many of the graphs that uh, many of the networks that are out in the wild. So you can look at many publications and you can see network represented in a unhelpful way, like as a hairball. And the problem is if you have data and you plot the data uh, like in a coordinate, like in a X, X and Y coordinate, you can easily tell if there's something wrong with the data or not. Yeah. Uh, the bad thing about network is that you can always represent your, your data and it will be difficult to catch if there's something wrong or there's an edge that is missing or there's uh, some nodes or some connection that are shouldn't be there. So I start to be very, more and more skeptic about, uh, about network. So this is why actually one of the motivations for me to, to, to start this uh, to, to yeah to, to be part of this uh, book club uh, on this topic is that to have deeper understanding and one of the misunderstanding that I used to to hold is that the layout of a network is something that uh, how to say it is, is is part of the structure of the network or something that you can infer only from the data that you have which is not true like if you have the data and you want to represent this data as a network or as a graph, you can represent it in any different layout. Yeah. So for example, if the fact that you have here a network and this network is close to each other, the, the layout is very close to each other, doesn't mean that they are similar. Or if things are random like this, doesn't mean that things are random or they have nothing in common. And now if you look at things in circular, it doesn't say that things are cir circular or, or they are equidistant from each other. At the end, your layout, uh, I think choosing the layout is a very uh, important choice and it needs to fit the, your data and, and to fit the, the objective of showing your data. Why are you showing this? Are you trying to show some communities in your data? then you'll try to uh, use a layout that maximize the separation between the nodes and this way. So uh, yeah, so this was a digression, but I needed to, to say this. So these are different layout, different representations. And uh, in this section, we will be looking at the, these layouts and how to use them. So for example, uh, so yeah, to start with the network layout determined to de determines the node's position in the plot and all what are all the layouts. So there are different. There are different approaches and different layouts. But at the end, all they are trying to achieve is to minimize the number of edges that cross and facilitate the visualization and reading of a network. Uh, so the author of, of the book actually he, uh, recommended and he stated that he mainly used two layouts: either the Kamada Kawi layout or the Fruchtman Ringold algorithm. And if we looked here, we so KK is the KK and FR. So this is the Kamada Kawi and the Fruchtman Ringold. So let's look at how they look like. I can pause because it's a GIF, but this KK, this Fruchtman. So you can see uh, that unlike, for example, this layout, it has some structure. And uh, yeah, this is why they are uh, some of the most widely used layouts. Uh, so how to add the layout information into the visualization of your network. Uh, in iGraph, you can use uh, this function, layout Kamada Kawi. And in ggGraph, to have an idea about what are the available uh, layouts in ggGraph, you can use, you can run this function, which is layout table graph iGraph, because uh, actually the layouts that are available in ggGraph are from iGraph. Uh, so you can look at them by uh, having a look on this function. So uh, to start with, I will uh, take our network, the iGraph network, and I will use layout Kamada Kawe, and I will assign the layout to this object. And here I will look at the, the iGraph network, and this is how the layout looks like. Yeah. Uh, and now do the same thing for the ggGraph, and I, uh, I set the layout to the same layout as this one here. And again, this is how uh, it looks like. Uh, because here it's a, our, our graph, our network is not that big to discover any structure. Like uh, I also not very aware of the, of the underlying structure relations underlying the network, but I don't expect that the, 
uh, the choice of, of a layout in this example will have a very uh, strong effect. Uh, it will change things, but it wouldn't hide the structure or something. Uh, so, but anyway, this is how you can choose and set the layout in your uh, network or in, in your graph. Uh, also, you don't need to go that far. You don't need to use this function if you are not using iGraph actually. In iGraph, if you have your data, you can use the layout argument and set the, the layout of interest. So here, for example, I used, I, uh, I wanted to use Kamada Kawi. So I set the layout to KK and you can see that this is the same as this, yeah. Uh, but here I set the layout by providing the co coordinates. So this is nothing but a table that has uh, co the, the, the coordinates of each node in space. And here I don't provide this table, but I provide the name of the layout of interest and it orders the, the nodes accordingly. And to, to have an idea about, uh, about the available layouts in GGGraph, you can uh, yeah, look at this function. In, uh, not, not in iGraph, sorry, in GGGraph, yeah. You can have a look at this function. So uh, now, so far we've looked at nodes, uh, edges and the, the layout of the nodes and, and the edges together. And uh, so the next part we'll be looking at the, the attributes. So, so far we uh, were looking at uh, the nodes and all we knew about each node is uh, th their connections, their edges, and we know the, the name of the nodes, but we don't know any further attributes or features or characteristics about this node. So uh, how can we introduce these attributes to our network? and how to visualize them, yeah? Uh, yeah, so Abdurrahman, any questions so far? Um, yes, if I may I will ask about the uh, argument called show.legend. Uh, yeah, so uh, here, uh, I can actually show you what does it look like. Yeah. Uh, so does it show just the default um, legend? Um, just for example, a an orange or the tomato color next to a default label of sorts. Okay, and, so yeah. this is a good question. So as you can see here, that show legend is within Geom Edge fan, yeah. Okay. So it will be the legend related to the edges, and mm -hmm. here this legend will show the the intensity. It will be like values relating the intensity, mm -hmm. like darker colors and a, like which color. Uh, is related to which intensity. It doesn't add a lot. And uh, it because you can already tell everything you need about the edge from here, you can tell the directionality. And you don't need to know if uh, what is the value at black and what is uh, the value at white. So it's actually uh, using G uh, show legend false for the geom edge is something that uh, I think it's helpful. But I let me show you how it would look like if we remove this. I can run the code quickly. Uh, let me jump to our studio. Mm. So it would be most helpful when, for example, working with more complicated networks where you have two different two or more different types of edges, um, or for example, the intensity represents a sort of number. Yeah, I, I think I, this is exactly when I think it would be most helpful because at the end you will need to, here I'm using alpha. So alpha is the, here the, the color, it controls the color, yeah? And because this is the, the part that is provided to the aesthetics, it will be the part that is shown in the legend. But uh, in the example that you have just mentioned, when you have uh, different types of edges, you will provide the edge type as here to this argument, to, mm -hmm. to, the, to the color argument. So you have uh, maybe color or alpha, and you will provide the, uh, the, the, the feature of interest that you would like to show. Uh, so showing something like this would be more uh, more interesting, but I'm trying to look at the the code node one name. Hmm. 
So this is which part? Layouts. Ah, oh, okay, it's okay. Here. Okay. Okay, let me share with you the the R Studio screen. Can you see our studio? Um, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay, now I can see it. Okay, great. So here you can see the, the network, yeah? And we show legend equal false, okay? If I remove this argument and I run the code, you will see that the, as I've said, the, the legend would reflect the edges and it would reflect the, the part that we have provided. So I, as you can see, like it's a, it shows that the black is one. And then as you go, as you uh, approach the, the receiving node, no, I think it's the source node, it's zero. So it's something that it's a, it doesn't convey a, a message about the network or something of interest, but it just, uh, um, useful for for the visualization, but not for showing it as the as as uh, as the legend. So this is how it would look like. But maybe you need to show it or something. I I, I think that for, for example, if you have uh, different colors for the for for this, for example, if you go from one color to the uh, to another color, and you would like to reflect something, uh, maybe the I don't know. I, I, I tried to think about it when would this be useful to show the intensity of these colors as a legend, but I don't think so. But anyway, this is how it would look like if you remove the, the edge equal false, the show legend equal false. Okay. Yeah, there may be some use for it somewhere, but I guess you'd have to face the problem in order to think of it as a solution. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And I, I think that the, the the fact that it's maybe not very useful is that it's something that, for example, if you have this representation with arrows, yeah, uh, you would never ask for a legend. Yeah? So a legend for what? You, you have the arrows, you have the, the nodes, so you don't need the, you need an arrow. And because when we go to this representation, we already know the directionality, which is provided by the arrows. I think that this is something redundant or sometimes it can add confusion. Or it can yeah, expose some uh, lack of understanding of the underlying of the visualization, like in my case now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's it for this part. And let's jump back to yeah, the presentation. So any, any further questions for this part? Um, no, so far so great. Thank you. OK. OK. So. Uh, so far, we have been looking at the the networks, and uh, the network like the the connections in the network, the nodes, the the layout. But if we know any, we don't know anything about the network uh, other than what we see in the plots. Yeah, uh, here I try to uh, add some attributes attributes to this network by uh, loading this data. So it add some attributes to this uh, network. For example, now we know that for each node, uh, we have the edge, the, not the, 
the edge, but the edge, the edge, uh, the edge. Yeah, okay, that's uh, tricky. So the age and uh, of the, the node, the person, the gender and the role in the family. And uh, now to integrate these attributes to the network, uh, we will need to, uh, when we are trying to make the network object in, in ggGraph, in iGraph, sorry, you will provide the, the edge list, which we already uh, did. And so previously we provided the sorry, previously we provided the edge list and we said that's a directed network, but we didn't have the attributes. Yeah. But now we have the attributes, so we can uh, pass it to this argument, the vertices. And now if we looked at the the object, previously uh, we had only like name, yeah, in the attributes, but now we have the names, the edge, the edge, the gender, and the role. Uh, so now we have more attributes to the network. Uh, to access these attributes, you can use V, the function V for vertex, vertices, and you pass your network and you select the attributes. So you can see here that these are the attributes for the nodes in the network. So this is all iGraph. So for ggGraph, you will do something very similar. So you will pass the edge, the, the edge list uh, set the directed to true and the attributes, but uh, just uh, mind the, the difference in the arguments. So here you have nodes, here you have vertices, it's uh, just semantics, okay? And this is now how it would look like. You will have the, the nodes, you'll have the nodes, uh, the, the names of the nodes and the other attributes that we have added and the connections or the edge list. So how to look at the, the attributes now? Uh, we will see this in the, in the following section, but uh, before going to the next section, I just uh, set a layout. So it's a Kamada Kawi layout that we'll be using in the iGraph and uh, ggGraph plots. So here, uh, I'm trying to look at the, the, attrib the attribute of interest that I would like to visualize here is the gender. So to do this, I use the function V and then I use this dollar sign and, and refer to the attribute. So here I'm, no, here I'm setting a new attribute and I'm calling this attribute color, okay? So this previously, this was not part of the, of the object. So yeah, I tried to go back here. You can see that the attributes, we have name, age, uh, gender and role, yeah? Uh, but now I would like to add a new attribute that would reflect the color that is assigned to each gender. So for example, I use a function called if else. And in if else, I try to uh, go over the vector that represent the gender and say that if one, if an entry is male, uh, set the color of this node to this color. And if it is not male, then set it to a different color and save the results of this comparison to a new attribute called color. And now if we looked at the, if we use the plot function, we can see that the colors now represent the attributes of interest uh, because now we have the green. So this will be the females and we have the blue, which are the males. Yeah. And the good thing that about ggGraph is that you don't have, you don't need to do all of this because you already have the attributes in the object. So you don't need to modify the object or add a new attribute or anything, just, uh, just refer to the color. So here I would like to color the nodes. So I go to the node points, I use the aesthetics that I, was, I would like to change. I would like to change the color and I set the color to gender. And here, because I set the color to gender, here you have the colors. So each node is, is uh, as a color that represented gender. And also you have the, the, the legend. And here you can see that I didn't set the, the legend to false because the legend here would convey something useful. Uh, but yeah, you, you can see how uh, at this stage of the analysis, you can see that the advantage of using ggGraph compared to iGraph is that now that we, if you have an attribute of interest, you can visualize it without further modifying your object or your gg object. And now if we would like to, to maybe visualize another attribute. So we added the age, we added the, the role and gender. 
here we looked at the gender, but we might be also interested in looking at the, the role of each, uh, each uh, participant in this network, each, uh, each person in this network. So in iGraph, you, what you will need to do, you will need to remove the color attribute that you have defined for gender. So here you set it to NA. And so you like you erase, you erase it, and then uh, you will try to take the new attribute of interest, which uh, now it's role, not gender, and you will try to make the same thing. Go over this uh, uh, this attribute vector and compare each entry. If it is a father, set it to this color. If it's a mother, set it to this color. If it's a son, set it to this color. If it's uh, not uh, any of those, set it to the, that color. Yeah. And uh, now we go back to our network and after modifying the color attribute to reflect role, this is how it would look like. We can see that uh, we have, we expect to have one father and one mother. So I would be uh, surprised if, we, if I saw more than one green. So, okay, this is not the case, that's good. And we have a uh, burly wood. So I expect it to be yellowish. So yeah, we have one mother and one father, two brothers and two sisters. So this is how this, is, this all looks good. Uh, again, uh, we can do the same thing in GGGraph, but as I've said, you don't have to change the, the, the structure. You don't need to change the object each time you would like to visualize a different attribute. So here I just uh, pass the attribute of interest, which is role. And I do the same thing that I've done before for gender. And here it will uh, show the color of each node and you will have the new legend. The, but yeah, so this legend, the father, mother, daughter, and son. Good, uh, so uh, happy family. And at the end here, I wanted to do, yeah. So uh, these were two uh, factors. So these were two, two attributes or two variables, but they are uh, discrete. So they are, uh, so these are not, I think these are nominal, yeah, nominal variables. So they are uh, discrete variables. So what would be the case or how to represent the a continuous variable? Yeah, Abraham, thanks for confirmation. Uh, and so how can you represent a continuous variable? So you can uh, represent it in the same manner by changing the color. And then the legend would be a continuous legend. Uh, this one looks like a, yeah. so it will be a continuous legend, but also you can represent it as a color and so that you can convey the message of the age and also the, the role. So here uh, I used uh, iGraph, I introduced a new attribute which would reflect the age. So here I, uh, I divide the age by five. Uh, it's just, you don't have to, represent the age uh, as is, and but you just need to see how things look like relative to each other. So if you have this network of a family, you would expect to have two nodes that represent the parents, which are uh, bigger than the other nodes. And this is the case. Uh, so you have the father and the mother, and the smaller nodes will be the, the siblings, the siblings, the sons and daughters. And you can do the same thing, but with no further mod uh, modification to the ggGraph object by passing both the role attribute and the age attribute, yeah? And now this is how it would look like in the ggGraph plot. You will have the colors representing the role of each part, and you will also have the age. Uh, and here the age, uh, the, the larger age, so age, uh, Nine and seven. Oh, so nine and seven is not the edges. The edges divided by five. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so yeah, and here you can see that yeah, the, the parents are larger than the the sons and daughters, which is the right thing. But the main message is that you can represent uh, two attributes uh, of the nodes in your graph, uh, in I graph and in GG uh, in, in I graph and in GG graph. Uh, what what I wanted to say? Yeah, I think that. Uh, I actually mentioned uh, that what would it look, how would you represent a continuous uh, variable? Actually like here, the edge, edge is, it's a numeric variable, but it's not actually continuous. So it's discrete. And this is why this legend, it's not a continuous legend. You can see that 
uh, each age group has its own uh, circle. So uh, I wasn't very accurate. It's actually, uh, it's more of a numeric variable, but it's not a continuous variable. Uh, you can convert it to a continuous variable. Uh, it wouldn't affect anything in the network, but you will get uh, a continuous uh, legend here, but this is a discrete one. And with this, I think we have reached the, the end of this chapter. Uh, so that's it from my side. Abdurrahman, any questions? Any input? Yeah, or... uh, just yes. a little thing that I was confused about. So how does the um, iGraph um, function understand that you want to change the size, the size of the nodes depending on the age, for example? So I realized that you changed the um the object itself but then you didn't specify an argument for changing the node size so i'm confused how it understands um that you want to do that yeah that's a good point actually i should have uh, said a few words about this so let me quickly bring you back to the yeah the basics okay Ah, so here you can uh, you already remember that uh, to control the vertex size, <coughs> you can modify this argument in the when you are calling plot, right? So mm -hmm. you can set it to fifty or something, or ten to change the the size, right? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, this is how you would uh, change the size if you would like to apply that uh, one size fits all. No, so that's. That's a bad use of, of, the, of the sentence. But if you yeah. want to, like, to have one size, to all of the nodes, yeah? But if you would like to have a, a different size to each node, what you would do instead of modifying the, the argument in the function, you would modify the, the actual object. So what, what would happen is that the, the plotting function would look in the object if there is a defined attribute for color and size. Yeah, and if you provide, if if you set the color and the if you set the color and the size here as arguments, it will actually overwrite the. It will overwrite the the attributes available in the object. But here I didn't add this. So for example, uh, even if you have the the color or the size available in the object, but you uh, modified the arguments in the plotting function, it will be overwritten. Uh, but because here I, do, I don't specify it, so it wouldn't look in the arguments, it would look in the object and see if there is a color or size argument. So I get how it sort of reads the color attribute in the object, but when it came to age, you didn't call it size, you just named it age over five. So does it just look for any um, numerical variable and uses it to specify the node size? Uh, maybe. Oh, no, but I here, uh, as you can see, uh, so the name of the variable, the well, name of the attribute, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the name of the attribute is size, but uh, to, to define the size, I take another attribute, which is called age. And then, so this is a numeric vector. And then I, def I divide each entry of this vector by five. And mm -hmm. then I assign it to the attribute called size. OK. OK, okay. Uh, nice, much more clear. Thank you. Great. So yeah, I think that uh, that was it for this week. Uh, do, do you have further questions or comments before holding this meeting off? No, I just want to say that I've had fun. It's really a good way of learning about networks. Yeah. So uh, maybe if we like have some sort of homework, I don't know, or maybe the reading uh, list is, is enough. Yeah, uh, like I, I think I the, the leading list is actually overwhelming, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, Thanks for, no for homework for you. This. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So yeah, uh, see you next week. Have a nice yeah. uh, evening. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.